third is Suarez. Goodell comes running in. He's under it, makes the catch. Here's the throw to the plate. It's in the air. He is. Uh, welcome back to the Super Money Podcast. I said that the last episode was probably the worst um, non-end of the season, uh, you know, getting knocked out of the playoffs episode we've done. This one might be worse. Um, so that 22-game stretch that we highlighted forever, and we were pretty much begging for like 10-2, and 11-11, like just average play. Uh, they went 7-15. and 15. It was bad, really bad. Um, they only won one series over that time frame, and it was against the Dodgers in LA of all teams, which is just so funny. Um, you know, the Phillies have only won two series like in the last month, and both of them are against the Dodgers, which is so funny. Um, I'm trying to think. They split with the Marlins, then they lost a series to the Braves, then they swept the Dodgers, then they lost a series to Oakland, and then it's been all this after the uh, the All Star break. Uh, it's been bad, and it's not even just that because they got absolutely embarrassed by the Marlins and a guy I never heard of who topped out at 91 last night. Uh, we're <laughs> recording this during the game on, what's today, Wednesday. They have a 6-5 lead in the bottom of the seventh, but Jose Alvarado is going to pitch the eighth, so this one could get negative really quick. Um, but overall, everything has been going bad, but – I, I don't know what's been sticking out to you because to me it's just literally been everything. Um, they don't pitch good. They've blown a lot of leads throughout that stretch. Um, there was a five-run lead they blow, and there was about, what, four or five three-run three leads, and uh, like at least three of those seventh inning or later. Um, it's it's not been ugly. But if they would have just won three or four more of those games and got to 500, things would have been way different on this trip. Yeah. Um, it's definitely been ugly. Like – so far to the point where you've kind of convinced me to be negative. I've tried to be pessimistic huh. or optimistic just because it's been like, it's such a long season and we've kind of seen the ebbs and flows um, the last two years, especially, but you know, we're not used to them starting off so good. And I know we, we kind of joked about this in the group chat at the start of the year, like that, that stretch in July when they go, um, you know, seven and, you know, 10 or whatever that stretch might look like, we're all going to throw a fit and, you know, say the season's over or whatever. But, you know, kind of like you hinted at, it, it was worse than we could have imagined. Uh, they went almost a month without a series win. And we we talked about it last episode, but they got a lot of breaks on that stretch, like the sense that the Pirates didn't pitch any of their big three yeah. in Eames, Jones, and Keller, and you still lost that series. Um, the What stands out to me the most is just the, the inconsistency in some of the stars offensively, and I'll say pitching, mm -hmm. um, but I'll focus offense to start. Like, Turner has been wildly inconsistent since the day that they signed him. He's had two really good stretches and two equally bad stretches, if not worse. Um, yeah. Because, you know, when, when he's going well at the plate, it, it seems like he is, you know, fine defensively. He's never going to be a great defender. He never was a great defender. But when he's bad at the plate, not only is he costing them runs by leaving runners on base, but then he's making errors in the field that give the other team runs. And we've just seen that too much. Um, we're recording Wednesday. I know they said it was a scheduled day off. I think that's BS. He didn't run out yeah, that, that double happens. play ball in Arizona that, you know, how the hell does Trey Turner not beat a, a backhanded ball to third base that they could also turn a double play on out? Uh, you could clearly see the stutter step. He, he slowed up on that. And then. Well, the, yeah, I was going to bring that up. Like, he, his aggression since he's come back has been like, I don't know. He's running like Schwarber. 
like he has what two stolen bases since he's come back. Like, I, yeah, it over. It's been a problem for. That's not just been on this like struggle bus. It's been since he's kind of came back. Even when he was hot at the plate, it was still a lot of the base running was not aggressive. Yeah, and then he he made the error on Tuesday night. I don't think it ended up bringing a run around a score, but I, at that point, it didn't really matter. We've just seen too many lethargic errors from right. Turner and. The, the Harper inconsistencies have been really, really bad. Uh, he, he's been better the last week or so in terms of hitting the ball, but the it's so unlike Bryce Harper. In if you look at some of the metrics in terms of clutch situations with you know guys in scoring position or the seventh inning or later in a big spot, like we've seen this guy time and time again last year, especially in the regular season, come up with last year and yeah. homer in the ninth inning. And I think his, his WRC plus in those kinds of spots this year is like four, Like he's 96% worse is, yeah. than the average hitter in those spots. So, you know, obviously he was otherworldly. Like if he came up in the ninth inning last year, you knew it was a tie game or you knew a run was coming in somehow, even if nobody was on, but we haven't gotten that this year. Real Mito has been non-existent since he, he came off the IL. Um, you know, R- Johan Rojas, who we complained about for, you know, two and a half months to start the season about his has offensive been the- production. He's ha- has a higher batting average than Marsh and Stott. Um, every contact that Stott makes is is lazy. We, we've harped on this a bunch this season, but they took what happened in the Diamondback series last year and kind of were like, all right, we need to strike out less, we need to string singles together, and we need to run. Well, Stott's strikeout percentage is definitely down, but so is quite literally everything else. So it to me, the at-bats just seem like we're prioritizing bat on ball, and it's, you know, the 85, 86 mile an hour exit velocity pop-ups that the right fielder moves 10 steps in for instead of actually swinging with intent yeah. in two O counts. Um, pitching wise. Well, the thing is, it looks like, it looks like he's taking like the hardest swing of his life on those. And it's like a weak fly out. Like they look crushed the way he, like his effort in the swing. And then it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. It, it seems to me that he's, he's out on his front foot a lot. So like the upper body's moving mm-hmm. a ton in terms of like the arms are violent from getting from like his, his loading point to the ball. But the, the lower body just isn't connected to him at all. So it's all upper body. So it looks like he's swinging out of his shoes, but the shoes aren't going with him to swing out of. So it's kind of like a masquerade in the sense that it looks a lot more aggressive than it is. Pitching wise, it it's tough yeah. to expect Jeff Hoffman to do, you know, give up five runs all year. But this, this stretch has definitely been tough for him. With that being yeah. said, I still trust Hoffman in pretty much any situation. Uh, he he looked okay tonight, mm-hmm. Wednesday night. Um, he gave up a leadoff single and struck out the next three guys. So I think Jeff Hoffman's interesting. I think he's kind of like that old school reliever where if you if you get one off of him, he's kind of that fu guy where he takes every single ounce of contact off of him personal, and he's going to try and shove it down your throat every pitch after that. So I I still trust Hoffman. Strom was shaky. He's getting back there. Um, the starters are what concerns me. We, you know, I joked last episode or two episodes yeah. ago about get the ball to Tyler Phillips. Uh, that experiment's over. Um, Christopher Sanchez has regressed a little bit. The Dodgers start was good. Not, not first half Christopher Sanchez, but again, kind of like Hoffman. I don't think we expect Christopher Sanchez to pitch to like a 2-5 all season. Obviously, he's, right. he's shown that he's you know more than serviceable. He's very good, but I like a two five is Cy Young type stuff. Um, Wheeler's been consistent. He has the the bad outing here or there, but he's still you know even his okay outings. You look up and he gave you six with you know one or two runs and six or more strikeouts. So you know I still Nola's hit or miss. I don't think. You know, he hasn't really done much in the second half for me to sit here and harp on him. Tywin Walker, I just – I don't need to see that guy pitch again. But, you know, I 
I try to stay away from WIP just because I think their baseball takes are egregious. But I got in the car after work today, and believe it or not, Spike Eskin was actually saying something that <laughs> kind of resonated in the sense we, we saw Cleveland here two weeks ago, and mm-hmm. not that by any means is Cleveland the model franchise, but they're never dominant offensively. But they always seem to, you know, win a lot of games. They win 90 games. They win their division every year. They, mm-hmm. they pitch really well, and they they make do offensively, even going back to the Lindor years when they were a little bit better. But you, you see them field well. Stephen Kwan gets on base, and then they, yeah, they, they run do, a lot. Yeah, They run. They field well. They do the little things to drive in runs and manufacture stuff, and you see them, and it's like, wow, they're playing really good baseball. And then – you watch what the Phillies have done, you know, the last, really since London, they're the third worst team in the National League since London, but especially it, it seemed magnified over the, uh, since the All-Star break, mm-hmm. where they're yeah. the worst team in the major league. They're, they're making a lot of errors. They're making a lot of base running plays. And when you're not hitting like they currently aren't, mm-hmm. and you're not pitching as well as you were, your room for error just becomes much smaller whereas even if a cleveland team's not hitting if they're making plays defensively and they they know how to manufacture runs your margin for error is still a little bit bigger because you're not grinding into the the double play with guys on the corner and no outs right i i don't harp on the since london thing because the fact they're under 500 during that stretch is because of what's happened post all-star break um and they also during that stretch harper missed time schwarber missed time Marsh, who was hot at the time, missed time. Turner was still coming back. Um, so I don't – like the the since London thing that everyone likes to bring up, I just like to say since the All-Star break because I think even pre-All-Star break, they were totally fine. There were 29 yeah. games over 500 at one point. Um, it's everything post-All-Star break that's bugged me. Um, anything that's happened in June was whatever. They were playing like 500 ball, but they were dealing with a lot of injuries. Now, outside of Ranger Suarez, who was struggling anyway – they're healthy and they look worse. Um, I know Hayes is out and Marsh has been abysmal. Um, the strikeout rate is getting close to 45%, which is, I mean, you should be sent to AAA for that. I'm just like, you should be. Um, is Hayes being hurt? The reason he's not is there. I feel like they're so afraid to hurt egos in this clubhouse. Um, I think it's why Garrett Stubbs is still in the majors. Um, you know, I think it's why they haven't brought in, Marshawn up here and gone to a more, uh, as JT Romito rips a two-run double down the line, and I'm about to say this, um, they haven't gone to more of a platoon with Romito, who clearly is regressing both offensively and defensively, um, whereas Marshawn, I think, would be a perfect platoon player with him because he's a switch hitter, um, and he's a fine defensive player, not above average, but he's fine there. He's got and a rocket Stubbs. for an arm. Yeah. And Stubbs is a complete zero back there who brings you nothing at the plate. Um, you know, like, Amundo Sosa is a perfect utility player. I have no complaints with him at all. Does some of his at-bats, you know, when he swings at three straight pitches and the other batter's box get on my nerves? Yes, but he's a utility player. It's whatever. Um, Weston Wilson, I don't The whole Merrifield thing and Weston Wilson still, like, I thought Weston Wilson would get a couple more looks, especially now with Hayes out. And it's been Marsh despite him struggling. So I, I'm just a little confused. Um, can I get a little more Weston Wilson maybe? Um, I'd like to see it. The pitching thing to me, Zach Wheeler's fine. He's fine. We know that. I think Schwartz will be okay when he comes back. We'll see. Nola is what he is. I don't think that's going to change. Um, another, But the big one to me is Sanchez because – we saw last year where kind of screwed them was they didn't have a fourth guy they overly trusted. Um, and that's when they got in trouble in that game that Craig Kimbrell blew in um, Arizona was because they had to use a bunch of bullpen guys too early in that game. Like Jeff Hoffman pitched like the, what, the fourth or something in that game. Mm-hmm. And I think Strom went super early in that game too. Um, and Chris Sanchez started that game. So if we get that Chris Sanchez again, where he's only going three innings and they have to pull him, then we have problems again. But if we get Chris Sanchez that can give me five or six innings and give up 
two runs, it's a totally different ball game. Because if that happens last year, they win against Arizona. So to me, that worries me because I don't want to be back to where we were where there's only three starters you trust in the playoffs. Four, I think, is the number you're going to need here. Um, obviously, I hope we avoid the wild card round. That's a possibility now. Um, in the DS, you don't need a fourth starter, but the World Series and the CS, you do. Um, so if they get to that point again, which I hope they do, but I, you know, we'll see how this goes. Um, I need Sanchez to be better. And that, that's kind of a worry of mine right now. Um, I don't know. Spencer Turnbull comes back healthy for the playoffs and you do some kind of thing with Sanchez and Turnbull where they each give you three innings in a game, like whatever. But he's the one that really worries me just because I know what I'm getting with Wheeler in the playoffs. I know what I'm getting with Schwartz in the playoffs. No, I know what I'm getting. I don't always love it, but I know what I'm getting. Um, so Sanchez is the one for me that has to get going. Um, Jose Alvarado has to get going. Um, you know, I was a little surprised. I thought they were always going to add another lefty without subtracting one. Now they subtracted Gregory Soto. And obviously part of that was the fact that he more or less asked out. Um, but Alvarado being really bad right now is not helping the fact that they subtracted a lefty. So it's pretty much Strom, Banks, who is, I don't know what Banks is, man. I mean, he's looked good a couple times and he's looked really bad a couple times, which I guess is what you get from a guy that normally pitches in the sixth inning. Um, it's Alvarado for me is the guy in this pen that I think is going to make or break it. Um, Cause if he gets back to where he was, you know, 2022 and last year, they have a legit shot with that bullpen, but he he's a big X factor for me. Um, he's got to get right. He's got to stop giving up home runs, and he's got to stop walking, guys, which when he's bad, those are the two things he does. When he's good, it's the two things he doesn't do. Yeah. It's especially important when you kind of look at the, the landscape of the National League and where you're going uh, in the playoffs. Like, Banks is fine, but I can't watch him pitch and not think he's like identical to Brad Hand. So yeah, that I see. For, for me is already like deterring, but you know, Strom is more, you know, he was obviously elite in the first half of the season. Like I said earlier, a little bit of a rocky stretch. I think he's more back than not. Mm-hmm. Um, when you look at the National League, there's the Dodgers with. You know, Otani, Freeman, Mookie Betts tends to hit righties a little bit better than lefties, I think. Um, you know, the, the Brewers, Yelich is kind of having a revival season. I know he's hurt, but his numbers are, you know, good. So you, you're going to need a lefty there. And then they just have a bunch of those fast guys like Sal Freelich, Bryce Durang that are lefties, so you kind of want that lefty to neutralize them so they're not causing havoc on the bases. The the Braves, we we know what they are with Olsen, um, and some, it, Harris is coming back. Yeah. So they have lefties who can, you know, Jared Kelnick's been very good for them this year. I think he's fallen off a little bit in the last month or so, but he, he's very good. Um, the Mets... Who knows what, you know, they're going to do. But Nimmo seems to, to kill the Phillies, and he's a lefty. Uh, yeah. before, I think they're kind of running out of gas. Yeah, but I, like if you just look at the playoff picture, like a lot of these teams have lefties in the top or the middle of that order that can, you know, break your back in the seventh or eighth inning with a big hit when Alvarado's there. And mm-hmm. I think – you know, we, we've seen him kind of go through these mid-season lulls before. He's predominantly been pretty good in the playoffs. Obviously, the the Jordan home run in the World Series was not his his <laughs> finest moment. But I'm, I'm hoping that it gets to the point where it's October again and, you know, he's like back, back in his playoff spot and – he turns it on. And I think I'm just saying that because the last three weeks of him have been so miserable to watch that I'm just, you know, grasping at straws, hoping 
trying to convince myself that he's going to turn it on in a big moment. Um, I don't think I'll be able to watch the TV when he's in the game in that big moment and just, you know, hope, you know, flip a coin and hope it lands on the right side. But the, the bullpen, you know, you're, you're talking about Sanchez and that's just such a huge X factor because like, yes, you added Estevez in the ninth or, you know, however you want to disperse him. I, I think they'll probably keep him in the ninth. He's yeah. been a, a pretty effective ninth inning guy. I don't think it's worth risking that, even though, you know, he went June and July without giving up a run and then has given up three and four outings with us so far. But yeah, I mean, they haven't really been, he hasn't gotten a lot of save opportunities. So I don't know. Yeah, exactly. They're just trying to get him work in, you know, not his usual spots. But then you have Hoffman and Strom to kind of, in terms of the, the inner trust circle right now for me, to disperse how you want to in big matchups. And mm-hmm. you know, like you said, last year in Arizona, that was the fourth and the fifth inning because that's what you deemed the big matchup. And then yeah. you're left in the sixth and the seventh and the eighth with, you know, the, the Kirk rings and the Alvarado's on, you know, back to back or three days in a row, depending on how things went the day before. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you, you use all your arms and it's like, Oh, well we have junior Marte and Craig Kimbrell. Like they, even the thing that drives me crazy about that Arizona series not to go back to it, but the, he pulled Sanchez because he didn't want him to face Cattell Marte again. Mm-hmm. Cattell Marte could have got a hit off like prime Randy Johnson in that series. Like he hit every at bat, it seemed. So, you know, Sanchez handled the lineup pretty well that game. And then you got scared of, you know, one guy with nobody on base. So you pulled him. It's like, yeah. Sanchez is the X factor in that sense, but you know, Thompson Thompson's starting to drive me a little crazy with some of the coach speak. Like the last three weeks it's been there's too much talent here, they're gonna start to figure it out. At some point the team takes on, you know, the the laid back personality and the trusting of the players has been great. Don't get me wrong. Girardi overmanaged when he was here and mm-hmm. played the analytics too much. And I'm all for running you know, the traditional baseball style of running the same lineup, you know, out there back to back days. And like, it's baseball, you're going to go over some days, it happens. But when you go, you know, when the only team that's worse than you after the all star break is the Chicago White Sox, and you're sitting there saying, yeah, there's too much talent here, they're going to figure it out. Um, you know, way too much talent for them to go on this long of a slump, things are going to change at some point you have to do something to send a message. And I talked about benching Turner earlier. I mean, it's, it's at the point where like, yeah, again, all four saying the same thing, but the body language and the things that they're saying is concerning after that Minnesota series, when you just lost two in Minnesota and two in Pittsburgh against, you know, okay teams. And and each each series he blew a three run lead in what the eighth inning. Yeah. And Harper's in the locker room saying the umpiring has to be better. And then, Mm -hmm. like, you know, Turner's not running out double plays. And, like, it's at some point they take on the personality of their manager. And they were 29 games over 500. And I think Thompson's laid-back persona just kind of got a little bit contagious through the, the, the locker room. And I think it reflected on the 22 game stretch. And, you know, there have been a lot of bone tantrums in there every time he gets out, it seems. I, see, I of, don't mind those, though. <laughs> there's been a lot of bad body language walking back to the dugout after strikeouts. And, you know, the umpiring in Major League Baseball as a whole has been very bad this year for sure. But there are a lot of pitches that are extremely borderline. And from the time you play Little League, it's – Tech to play with two strikes if it's close swing. And mm-hmm. it seems like guys are quicker to turn around and argue with the umpire than pull the bat off their shoulder and swing. So I, yeah. there's, there's just a lot of things that are going on right now that scream, we know the meltdown's happening and we don't know what to do to fix it. 
Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to touch on pretty much everything you said. Um the fact that keep saying like we're too talented. I hate that because I think they're just be- like believing it's going to happen without doing anything for it. Um they're not like they, they just keep talking that to themselves like it's going to happen, but who knows if it actually will. Like I I, like, let's be honest, a few of these guys are regressing. Real Mutos are regressing. Cassianos is regressing. They're getting old. They're mid-30s now. Um, Turner's clearly regressing. I don't know how much he's regressing, but it's definitely somewhat. Um, so you don't know that it's gonna. they're going to come back. Um, you know, I saw Thompson made another um, back-of-the-baseball card remark last night. And people started saying, well, should they re-sign Schmidt and Utley then? Because of what they did on the back of the bit, you know, like eventually you have to stop saying that. Like, I, I just think it's true. I think one of Marshall's thought should have been taught a lesson and sent down a triple A. They're young enough where you can do it, they have the options. Um, I think maybe if Hayes wasn't hurt, what happened with Marsh? Um, I think it's a possibility. Uh, so I mean, we'll see if they come out of it. They, if they win tonight, we'll see how this weekend goes with the Nationals, a team they historically have owned since Harper has gotten here. Um, so, you know, we'll see, but this, the second thing Thompson, yeah, he's a little too nonchalant at times. I think that's why Charlie was such a good manager because he was chill most of the time when they needed it, but when an umpire needed to get lit up, when a player needed to get lit up, you know, he held Jimmy Rollins accountable multiple times and mm-hmm. it was controversial at the time. Cause you know, Jimmy was, Jimmy was Reese Hoskins of that era in a sense, like he was the first guy that came up that gave people hope that, uh, you know, they could go somewhere. And, you know, he was the one that got there kind of before Utley and Howard and before they started buying some of these other guys. Um, so he was kind of, you know, that era is Hoskins. So for him to be, you know, get that kind of criticism at the time was controversial, but Charlie didn't care. And I feel like Thompson kind of cares because of this whole vibes dynamic they talk about all the time. And that's what concerns me that they're making like they're making too many feelings decisions, which they shouldn't be. Um, and that's what worries me. And I hope they get out of it. But that that to me is a problem. Um, just kind of wrap this up then. The NL as a whole, I think there's about I think there's seven. I don't know what the Cardinals are at. There's I think there's seven teams for these six spots. Um, teams like the Pirates, Reds and Giants have faded. I think the it's Cardinals Mets- are. So the Mets are two games back of Atlanta for the last wild card. And then Mm -hmm. the Cardinals and Giants are three and a half back. But the, I believe, oh no, the the Giants are playing the Braves. The Reds are hot. Um, The Reds are four and a half back. And I think they're winning or already won today. Yeah, they're winning now. So yeah, I, this they're, beating, season, they're beating they're beating St. Louis now, so they're they're in the mix as well. Right. This this line of season, they have to leapfrog four teams. I don't really see that happening. Um, it's hard, you know. You if it was one team in front of them and they were this hot, I could see it. You have to be better than four teams that have a lead on you. That's not always easy. Um, mm-hmm. So I think the wild card's kind of shaping up. To me, it's just are we avoiding this wild card round? I I know the division is down to six, um, and if the Braves win tonight, it'll stay at six. If they lose, it'll go to seven. I think the Phillies are winning this division. I'm not as confident in it as, honestly, I was three days ago. Um, Even when the Phillies were playing bad, I was pretty confident they were going to win the division. Um, The Braves have picked up a game and a half since then, uh, so I'm not as confident. I still think it's going to happen. To me, the big thing is, are we avoiding the wild card round, which I really want to do because, as we can see, this team is struggling in short spurts at the moment um so i think i'd like to avoid that and just get in these longer would series would they play if they're the third division they'd play the you play the six last, wild card yeah the six you play the winner of the second and third wild card no no, no. the first wild card plays the second wild card and the so last play the third one. round yeah. So if, plays the, if the season ended today, they'd get the Braves in the wild card series. Yeah, that, and that kind of worries me because I just don't want to see them again, and especially in a in a short series like that, where yeah. lefties like Sale can really hurt them. 
Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. actually, they're ahead. They're ahead of Milwaukee right now. But if they were last, they the Braves right. are the third wild card right now. Right. I just I don't care if they're the one or two seed. To be honest with you, um, yeah. that team plays so well out in LA that I don't like. I'm not worried about that. And that's yeah. also taking into a fact that LA won't choke in the NLDS, which they've done many times. I'm yeah. fine being the two seed. That team plays good in LA, and you're also banking on LA making it there. Um, yeah. I just want to stay out of that short spurt round because I don't trust them right now because they're so inconsistent hitting where in that series, if you lose one game, you're screwed. I, you know, I, you you get sale and freed in that series and you are, yeah, yeah, you're very likely to. Um, now the good thing is they have the tiebreaker over the Dodgers one. Awesome. And they swept the Brewers back in June or May, whenever that was, um, mm-hmm. So they only have to win one when they go out there. So, you know, that's big too. Um, so I, th- I think that'll help them significantly. So that's good. But, yeah, I'm just trying to avoid that wild card round. I don't care how, but one or two seed, I just don't want to play in that round with the way this team's playing right now. Um, I, it's just not worth it. Um, they got to get hot here. I, it, it's crazy to me that this team probably won't get to 95 wins. Um, with how good it was for so long. If they were at 500 over this stretch, they would easily get to 95, possibly 100 wins. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. So, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what happens here. But my number one priority the rest of this season, it's technically, I guess, to win the division because you have to win the division to get a bye. But my only priority right now is to just avoid this wild card round and get in no matter what get that week off or whatever it is, five days to figure out what's going on. If it, you know, just lingers that far, get your pitching set. It's very clear. I know Wheeler kind of struggles on longer rest, but I think Sanchez, Nola and Suarez benefit from it. Um, So sorry, Wheeler, love you, but you know, three out of four benefiting more than one out of four is the way I'm going to (laughs) go. And he's good enough where it's, he's not going to totally implode. I don't think so. I, that's just, this isn't good, but my one, the one thing I'm saying is just don't play in that wild card round, and I like their chances if they can do that. Yeah, and and it was. It's I'll be honest with you. I think no matter who they play, if they got in that wild card round, I think I'd pick them to lose. I, yeah, I just don't I mean, see it right now. No, right now for sure. But I think the the nice thing this week, even though it's only a three game series, while it kind of intertwined with this skid the Brewers played the Dodgers. So, mm-hmm. you know, while they were struggling, at least there was a three game period where they couldn't get laughed by both teams. Right. The Dodgers, I think are like two, I think they're, yeah, they're two games one better in the win column. They're two yeah. games better in the win column, one better in the last column. And then the Brewers are two games behind us. So, you know, it, there's a lot left in the season. Um, Harper's predominantly very good in August um, in the past. So there's still half a month of August left. Hopefully the nine runs tonight, I know it's, you know, the Marlins aren't, you know, elite by any means, but then you, you roll into a four game national series. Um, You know, like you said, they've kind of dominated them since we got Harper and you go, we were against Wheeler against Mitchell Parker, who's, I don't know, fine, I guess. And then Noah against Patrick Corbin and his six ERA. That game, then, I'm taking the over. And then Sanchez <laughs> versus Mackenzie Gore. Mackenzie Gore always gives us problems just because he's a lefty that throws like 97 and he's a little funky. But, you know, they, they traded Lane Thomas, who seemed to kill us. Um, some of their, you know, Abrams is a lefty. Luis Garcia is a lefty who's been hitting homers. They, I feel like Sanchez matches up relatively well there. Mm -hmm. And then your last game is a punt game with Tywan Walker on the mound, who's basically Patrick Corbin, but a righty. So, you know, Wheeler and Nola to open up that series is huge. They're at home. Got to win Four game series. Alumni weekend. It's, I think it's with everybody you know, from the franchise that'll be in town, it's, you've mentioned it a bunch, 
they mentioned it a bunch come, you know, deadline time about the vibes that were within the team, within the locker room. The the national series is a big vibe series to I think settle everyone down. If you could win three, if you could sweep well, some of the legends are around. I know there's a ceremony for Chooch on Friday. If you could kind of sweep at home and re- restore some of the pulse that was there through, you know, April, May, June ish, that'd be that'd be a big series to to kind of re-cement yourself as you know the the top dog in the yeah. national league. not that the nationals are you know good by any means but four game series at home you gotta at least split it i said four and two homestand would be you know kind of a must have for me to have you know a ton of confidence with them because you go right into atlanta after it and you, you don't really want to split these three and then go into a a, a divisional series where you only have like a six game lead or so. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a big series this weekend, and it didn't have to be, but they they let it get to this point. Yeah. So the road ahead's interesting because it's not what has been where this twenty two game stretch was just insane. Um, there's a couple tough series. Like they go to Atlanta, they go to the Royals, which is, you know, difficult. I don't think it's this, but um, there's some more sporadic tough series. I think the nice thing is they do play a few teams that sold off, um, play this Marlins team, which technically sold off, but that really hasn't done anything. They play the Nationals a lot that have, they've sold off. Um, they play the Rays who have sold off a little bit. Uh, they have a series with the Cubs, I think, out there. The Cubs bought, but they bought for, like, next year. Very odd deadline for them. But then uh, they also sold, like, Mark Leiter. Right. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. There's a few teams that, like, those tweeners that they still have to play. Um, it's not crossing my mind. But Toronto. Yeah, Toronto was one of them, yeah. They sold so, Gucci. Yeah, and like whatever the Mets are right now, um, I, I'm of the belief that they've kind of run out of gas after they put everything to get in the conversation. I so will we'll, say, I know, I know the the Mets and not the Nationals too, obviously, will will definitely want to play spoiler. But mm-hmm. having you know, however, they have a lot of their last. Let's see, three, six, nine, twelve, sixteen games. Three of them are against Milwaukee but then six against the Mets, three against the Cubs and three against the Nationals. Like that's, if you're, if you're in a race, obviously yeah. the, the Mets are kind of scary given this team, this core specifically their track record against the Mets the last two years. Yeah. But, you know, that could be a, a big stretch to kind of rack up some wins and get to, you know, what, depending on where the Dodgers are, we said they're a game and a half now get, tied with them where you have the tiebreaker or mm-hmm. you know pull a little bit further ahead and get cement that by if the Dodgers are already you know lapped you at that point and I'll be honest with you I don't have a huge problem with them having to play meaningful games through the end of the regular season as long as you get that by then mm-hmm. um you know a lot of people have blamed Braves fans my bad Braves fans but look oh the buy's been so bad the thing is Atlanta really hasn't, especially last year, the year before the Mets, you know, they came up and got and beat the Mets, but they, I think like the last couple of weeks, they were still more or less in cruise control on there, like the last 10 games or so. And then last year, I mean, the division was over at the beginning of September, you know, like, so the, there was that little lull, but them and the Dodgers who also got upset last year in the NLDS, both those teams were in cruise control all of September. You know, I think there's a difference between playing meaningful ball in September and then getting a few days off and pretty much not playing a meaningful game since the middle of August, which those two teams did last year. So mm-hmm. Philly's playing to fend off the Braves and to keep ahead or even with the Dodgers and the Brewers, I think will actually be good for them. Um, I don't want it to obviously get bad to where they could lose all these things, but I think at least playing meaningful ball to the last buzzer of the regular season will help. Yeah, for sure. 
All right, so that's going to do it uh, for this one. Hopefully, next episode, a little more positive. Um, looks like the Phillies are going to win tonight, 9-5 in the ninth with two outs. So uh, if they lose this, I we're going to re-record right away and uh, flip out again. But let's hope that doesn't happen.